This is episode 6, Inflectional and Derivational Morphology. As we learnt in the last video, there are going to be three aspects of each word class that we will look into to determine what word class each word belongs to. These are semantics, what the word means, morphology, how the word changes, and syntax, how the word fits in a sentence. When we look at the morphological features of a word class, these features can be divided into two types, inflectional morphology and derivational morphology. So inflectional morphology refers to a functional or grammatical change in the word. For example, cat is a noun. If we have more than one cat, then we add an S and we say cats. This S that we're adding onto the back of S is a grammatical change. It's telling us that there is more than one. So that's an inflectional morphological change. Derivational morphology, on the ha other hand, refers to changes that can be added to words to define their word class or to change their meaning. It derives from the original meaning or the original word class. So let's take the word compete, for example. Let's, here it is here. Now compete is a verb. If we add ition onto the end, so we'll move the e and add ition, it becomes competition. Now competition is a noun. Alternatively, we can add the word, um, the ending itiv. And competitive is an adjective. Um, additionally, we could add ly onto the end of itiv to make it competitively. And well, that's an adverb. So all these endings are changing the class of the word from a verb into something else. So these are derivational morphological changes. They don't have to go at the end. Derivational morphological changes can also go at the beginning. For example, I might also write the word super or super competitive. Or super competitively. Now what I've done there is I've changed the meaning from competitive, where someone is competitive, to someone being super competitive or really competitive. So I've actually altered the meaning of the word a little bit. I've put um, a morphological change at the beginning of the word and I have changed the meaning of the word a little bit. So this is also a derivational change that's coming at the beginning. It's not changing the word class, but it is changing the meaning of the word. Okay, so what about competing. So let's add ing onto the end of this. Is this a derivational change or an inflectional change? Well, I'm going to say yes to both, I think. And that's because ing can be the gerund, which is a type of noun. For example, competing is something she takes very seriously. In that situation, competing becomes a noun. And if that's the case, then we're putting on a derivational change. However, I might be adding ing on to show the progressive form of the verb, such as she is competing tomorrow. Now in that situation, it's not a derivational change, it's actually an inflectional change. So in this situation, you can clearly see the difference between a derivational and an inflectional change, just based on the other um, important syntactic semantic um, features to see whether it's acting as a noun or whether it's actually changing and acting um, as a verb, continuing to act as a verb with a different grammatical change. Let's take a look at a few other examples to make sure that we understand. So can we identify whether the morphology underlined in these examples are inflectional or derivational? So let's give it a go. I jumped into a puddle this morning she is an environmentalist. This is unbelievable. I have John's umbrella. Emma goes to school. All right, so let's start with ED on jumped. So this is telling us 
that it happened in the past. So this grammatical change of it didn't happen regularly, it doesn't happen regularly, it happened in the past. So this is an inflectional morphological change because it's a grammatical, um, telling us something grammatical about the sentence. Okay, number two, she, has, she is an environmentalist. So the environment, I'd say, is our root word here. So if we add al onto that, it becomes the adjective, an environmental problem. And if we add ist onto the end, it becomes a noun again, but it's specific to being a person. So I think both of these are derivational changes, changing to the adjective and then changing to a noun with a person. Okay, this is unbelievable. All right, so here, believe is our root word and we have un on the front. Now this changes believe into not believing. So this is deriving from the original meaning. So it is a derivational. And believe is a verb, but with able on the end, it becomes an adjective. So that's also a derivational change. We have, I have John's umbrella. So this is an apostrophe S showing possession, as in whose umbrella is it? It's John's umbrella. So this is a grammatical change or an inflectional change. So I'm going to put an I on that. And finally, Emma goes to school. In this situation, the ES on goes is making sure that the third person goes is reflecting Emma. So it's a grammatical or an inflectional change. So let's pop that there. And that's the distinction between inflectional and derivational morphology. And so I think we're finally ready to jump in and begin to explore our word classes in depth. And we're going to begin by looking at nouns. So until then, thanks for watching The Language Code.